Okay, Sue Lindelof videos. This is an algebra problem. I keep getting a lot of questions about this. It goes to chemistry, algebra. It shows up on every SAT. It shows up on the ACT. It shows up on GRE and GMAT. So we might as well take a look at this. And it's one of those mixing solutions problems. It says a chemist wants 100 gallons of a 36% solution. She'll be mixing 24% solution with 50% solution. How many gallons of each solution will be needed? Once you get your, what you need here is two equations. And once you get them set up, this problem becomes really, really easy. Otherwise, it's absolutely baffling. So let's just take a look at it for a second. We need two equations. So that's what I'm thinking here. I want two equations. So the first equation I know, let's do this. Let's take a little let statement and say, let's let x equal 24% solution. All right. And let's let, um, let's let y equal that 50% solution. All right, and then we're going to say we know that here's our first equation. We know that the amount of 24% solution plus the amount of 50% solution has to equal a total of 100 gallons, doesn't it? So here's equation one. I'm just going to mark it here, equation one. And then I'm going to make my second equation over here. It's going to call it E2. You don't need to do this. I'm just keeping track of it for myself. That the 24% solution plus 50% sorry, solution has to equal 36%, doesn't it? And it has to be 100 gallons total, right? Okay, so here we go with this. Let's see if we can't get this figured out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to solve for either x or y. Some people say solve for y, solve for x. It doesn't matter which one. Just keep track of them. So I'll go ahead and solve for y, and I'll get that y is equal to 100 minus x. That was just a little quick algebra right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute it into this equation. So sub into second equation, or e2. So that's 0.24x plus 0.5. And here we have y, but we know that y is equal to 100 minus x. And if you're sitting there going, why the hell would you do that? Because it's very, very hard, impossible, to solve equations in two variables. So what we need is everything in one variable. So here we have this size in x, and here we have y in terms of x also. I'm going to go ahead and do this. 0.36 times 100 is 36. Is that OK? And then from here, I'm just going to start cleaning up my math a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. I'm going to distribute this into here. I'm going to get 0.24x is equal to 0.5 times 100. Whoops, sorry. 0.5 times 100 is 50, isn't it? And 0.5 times negative x is negative 0.5x. All I did was distribute into here. It's equal to 36. I'm going to keep cleaning this thing up a little bit. All right, I'm going to keep cleaning this up. And when you do negative 0.5x plus 0.24x, you get negative 0.5x. 0.26x, right, plus 50 is equal to our 36, okay? Going to keep moving everything over, move all the numbers to this side and leave the variable on the left-hand side. It's the way I like to do it. So I'm going to add negative 50 to both sides. So that makes this 0, and this is equal to negative 14, right? And you get negative 0.26x is equal to negative 14. I'm going to divide both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0.26 divided by negative 0.26. Right? Negative over negative is a positive. 0.26 over 0.26 is 1. 1 times x is x. Right? And when we do this math, I went ahead and used a calculator to do this, and I got 53.85 gallons. Right? And remember, we said x was the 24% solution, so 0.24 solution. We know that when we add these two together, we have to get 100. So 100 minus this gives us that we need 46.15, whoops, sorry, 15 gallons of 0.36 solution. All right. Look, you guys, I hope this was helpful. It is kind of a pain. Remember here, when you come into a problem like this, the first thing you're going to do, whether you see this in chemistry or you see it on the SAT or, or on the ACT, First thing you want to remember is that you're going to want to have two equations. That really is the key. And once you get two equations, 
right? You just solve one in terms of the other, plug it into the second equation, right? And then start solving. Without two equations, you're going to go round and round with this. It's going to become very, very frustrating. So look, you guys, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, please let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks, you guys.